Hello, 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 and welcome back to Keeping the Real with the Deja Show. Welcome back, all my kings and queens. Thanks for tuning in. As you know, I always say, I love watching you watch me. All right, so let's go with the topic today. Is going to be weather, one of our topics. We have a lot of stuff for you today, so sit back and relax. We got some weather clips for you from the Weather Channel, and uh, let's just get straight to it. It's supposed to be spring, but I don't see it. You give us two days, mm-hmm, that's all we get. All right, now let's just verge back for a little bit. We know this is all weather modification by the government, okay? If you don't know, you need to wake the fuck up. All right, so let's just see what they've been up to. Oh, just ripped the roof off. A water spout damages buildings and boats on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Oh my gosh. The funnel spins ashore, becoming a tornado. Outside Jackson, heavy damage in the Mills Creek neighborhood. I was asleep. My wife woke me up, said, get outside. The trees are falling and the roof's coming off, and that's what happened. In northwest Louisiana, a tree splits a family's RV, killing a two-year-old girl. A tornado scars Galilee Baptist Church in Shreveport. East of town, a tornado tears into a shopping center. The tornado came straight through this area and uh, hit this whole side of the, the retail building. We did get some water damage on the inside. It could have been a lot worse. Holy This EF2 tornado rips into northwest Arkansas. There's significant damage to several homes. The Twister's path nearly 12 miles long. There's no roof, no ceilings left. It's just basically the wall. It's all there is left to it. A suspected tornado also hits a farm in southwest Arkansas. Witnesses say it lasted all of 30 seconds. Over before you knew it. Over before we knew it, yeah. And the tornado outbreak is linked to two deaths, one in Louisiana, the other in North Carolina. Jim, of course, North Carolina. Major flooding in Montgomery County, Maryland right now. Uh, take a look behind me. You can see this car totally submerged in the water. This is a beach drive in Kensington, Maryland. Uh, the man who was in that car went out about 3 o'clock in the morning. Everything was fine. A flash flood warning has been issued for our area. That's when he ran into a wall of water, completely stopped his car in its tracks. He said he sat there for about 90 minutes as the water got up above his knees. Finally, the firefighters were able to get in there, pull him out safely. Uh, but you can see the water still rushing down. And as we look further up the street there, you can see yet another car also submerged, stuck in the water there. So uh, the rain is still coming down here. We're seeing some major flooding in this area. Fortunately, the two people who were trapped in those cars were pulled out okay. But again, uh, this looks to be a problem for most of the morning as we continue to monitor major flash flooding here in the Maryland area. Look at the Northern Plains dumping up to 20, even more than that, 30 inches of snow in some locations. South Dakota, first of all, can you just look at Minneapolis and Kearney, Nebraska? You guys, it is mid-April. We had blizzard conditions in South Dakota. And also in the Twin Cities, we had snowfall rates of one to two inches an hour with zero visibility. And by the way, schools are closed in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Woo! As you can see in here, it's raining cats and dogs out this motherfucker. Man, oh man, I tell you. Got this shit going on. All right, well, enjoy the rest of these clips while I try to get find my umbrella. All right, you take a look at these pictures until you look up in the upper left corner. You're like, oh, this could be Maryland or Pennsylvania this morning. No, this is actually Kauai, which is the most inhabited uh, northern island of the island chain. A flash flood warning has been issued for our area. Four hours. All right, that, fled, that swept cars off roads and inundated dozens of homes and villages, as you can see in through here. Here's the deal, though. That rainfall that they got, not... Well, as you can hear, I'm about to drown. Get float away out this ditch. All right, this anchor shit ain't no joke. All right, well, anyway, as you can see, from them fucking with the weather and doing all this weather modification, we fucked. Mm-hmm. Got snow, fire... Flooding, non-stop raining. This ain't apocalypse shit, though. This is weather modification. So, for y'all thinking the rapture is going to happen and the world coming to an end because of all this weather, you know what I'm saying? 
Lies, folks. They just trying to get you ready for their big-ass agenda. Okay, well, I'm gonna go back inside. You see this bitch about to float away. Then I look out the window, and I start seeing the roof come off the house in front of me. reports from Route 38 in Cherry Hill. Kind of crazy. A little bit, mm -hmm. but you know, it is what it is. What it is, is a mess. That's horrible. That, that looks like no fun. A day-long nightmare for the drivers of these vehicles. I don't know if they swam, I don't know what they did. They all ran for higher ground. After misjudging how deep the water already was along Route 38, and how fast the road and their cars were filling up as it dips under the railroad bridge near Kenilworth. And then there was a traffic backup. Substantial, probably over an hour. Attorney Rich D. Tommaso saw why when he finally got to work, which is right next door to the mess. These streets don't go through, so nobody can get through on this side, nobody can get through on that side, and they had to do some very creative maneuvering to get around. They've been in there since 8.30 this morning. Dang, I, I hope that they uh, can figure that out. Drains clogged up with all kinds of debris. <laughs> forced officials to bring in more equipment to clear the highway before the next rush hour rolled around. New Jersey Department of Transportation officials pumping the storm water into a nearby creek. Occupants of the red work van out of New York City didn't want to talk about it on camera, but they did roll up in a rented van to salvage what they could before the tow trucks moved in. is nobody was physically hurt here possibly some bruised egos when you take a look at the debris and damage inside those cars they may not be driving those anytime soon in cherry hill joy Evans, fox 29 news is the so-called schuylkill expressway doing its best impersonation of the schuylkill river complete with white caps eastbound this morning was flooded out and the backup went on for miles and miles and miles. I know, because I took that video. Here's a perfect example of what not to do in a flood. A New York City bus got caught in a completely flooded Manhattan tunnel. At one point, the water rushed inside the bus, panicking the passengers. Not to fear, though. Everyone made it out just fine. And this is also from New York City. This is the Bryant Park station that subways had to skip because of water pouring onto the platform from above. Look at that. And it wasn't the only station hit hard by the rain. This is the 145th Street station. Subways skipped that station because of what you see. Water cascading down the steps and, yes, flooding the platforms. And then there's Minnesota. Doesn't that look like a beautiful winter scene here in April? Minnesotans firing up the snow blowers. Parts of the state got almost two feet of snow over the weekend. The mid-April snowstorm closed Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport for hours, canceled schools across the area. Snow crews, of course, out there in full force, clearing away all that snow. Okay, thanks for watching. Until next time, you know what we all say love, peace. And hey, Greece.